so glad you've joined us. And uh, I'm going to continue to pray for rain. That was like a little tease earlier. It rained here about 20 seconds. That was about it. <laughs> anyway, but it's a good day to worship the Lord. And so let's begin uh, by singing, Here I Am to Worship. Find in your hymnal, page 762, it's Psalm 30. Seven hundred sixty two. Psalm thirty. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up, and did not let my foes rejoice over me. And you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought me up, brought up my soul from Sheol. Restored me to a life in your hand. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. We 
weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, that my soul may praise you and not be silent. Amen. So I found a devotional that kind of refers to this psalm that I really liked. Um, and he's talking about how sometimes you plan out something for like your children or your grandchildren or, or people you know, and you have a picture in your mind of how this is gonna go. How often does it actually go that way? Not very often, sadly. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't go quite as planned, or like in this case, he's explaining he took his grandson to a San Diego Padres baseball game when they had a few huge fireworks display. Well, it turned out that the um, grandson wound up being terrified of the fireworks. They were very loud, they scared him, and so he went from grandpa's lap to daddy's shoulder crying and upset because he was scared. And so um, that he also noticed that his, uh, the grandson's dad, I'm assuming his son, I don't know, anyway, had a mutually tight grip on his child. And so when we think about um, King David, when he wrote this psalm, if you've ever read about King David, you know how he had lots of ups and downs, and some of it was self-inflicted, uh, and some of it actually was not, uh, like early in his life, when he was um, kind of, you know, we, he was a shepherd, and then suddenly Samuel, uh, God tells Samuel to anoint David as king because Saul was not doing so good. Um, and was not obeying the Lord. And so then uh, Saul kind of had some, some clue that David was a rival, not a friend. And so started going after David and trying to kill him. And so, um, and then even later, you know, when he was king, then some of these self-inflicted things like with Bathsheba and, and all of that. And so um, David would go from a calm, fruitful life to crashing down into chaos and difficulty. Um, he also had a thing with his son Absalom uh, who tried to take over the throne. So. But every time, if you notice, throughout the story and then these psalms that were written by him, where does he go? To the Lord, straight to his father's arms. Even when he messed up with Bathsheba, he did repent and he went to the Lord. And he went to his father's arms and repented of his sin. And so... Um, I think we can all agree that on some of our darkest days is when the Lord feels the closest to us. Um, sometimes not. I, I would say there's been a few times where I it wasn't sure where God was, but I trusted that he was there. And then, you know, after a little while, he showed me that he was there with me. And so we know that we can always run to the Father's arms when our life and our world and our um, whatever's going on can suddenly kind of crash down and over us. And so when we look at this 
um, psalm says, you know, I will extol you, Lord, for you have lifted me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. Uh, oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you healed me. He went to the Father and the Father healed him. And he restored him to him uh, life from among those gone down to the pit. He, he every time and again, and, and really for so many others in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, where people will go to God and he lifts them out of the pit and out of these tough situations and sets them back up. But we need to come to him. It's when people don't go to God and go to something or someone else that usually it kind of gets worse. And um, uh, Vince and I are reading through the Bible, and so now we're in the lovely... Um, uh, evil king, evil king, evil king, good king, evil king, evil king. <laughs> and like uh, out of the, I think, 20 or 25 kings in Israel, the northern kingdom, like none of them were good. And out of the kings in Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, only a handful were good. Most of them were evil. They, they just couldn't seem to focus on God. And so... But when there was a good king that, that sought the Lord, every time God restored them. And even within the exile, it was with the intent of calling back his people to himself so that he could restore them. And you, you guys know with your children, sometimes you got to let them suffer a little bit and come to you instead of just automatically rescuing them. And it's hard to do that. It's hard to see them hurting, but you know that sometimes you have to let them kind of make their own decision of coming back to you know what the right way is and what they should be doing. So um, I think that's just was my takeaway from this psalm is you know stuff happens in life and we get off track and away from God. Where things happen that we weren't even turned away from God, but things happen. But we can always run to the Father, and he will always restore us. He will always be there uh, to turn our mourning into dancing and to gird us with gladness. And, and in those times and in all times, we should say thanks to God forever. So um, we'll go ahead and... Um, switch gears. I'm sorry that we still cannot do communion, but we will be doing communion this Sunday because uh, Reverend Ronald Mucker, he's our uh, natural church development coach. He's uh, preaching this Sunday and since he is ordained in the United Methodist Church, he can serve communion. So that will be a blessing this Sunday and I'm excited to hear what he's going to share with us. So I hope you can come this Sunday or, or listen online. Um, and I just know that, that God is there for us in every circumstance. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you are there for us when we are in the pit, when our world is shaken, when we feel shattered. You are there to pick us up. And Lord, help us to keep focused on you and, and to run to your arms whenever we need you and Lord, to really let's uh, stay in your arms and, and uh, know that you are with us every step of every day because you are the great I am. And we want to be close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing, Great I Am. <clears throat> Close, close to your side. 
open for you whenever you reach for him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 